Hi everyone, it's me Evgeny again back with you and today we are continuing our sessions about Long Graph Studio. And today we will take a look at how to do the real persistence, so not in memory but to an external database. And also we will touch a bit the way how you can represent your graph in a different way, a special tool which is from Land Graph itself, so you can have a better overview of the uh, flow that happens in your graph and you can see some details. So it's where we are. And quick note, there is a link to Amazon website in the description. So please click on it and then when you buy something somewhere, Amazon will reward me and provide a couple of cents. So I will be closer to my dream. A new keyboard. All right, thanks a lot. And now let's jump into the coding session. Okay, uh, so as our persistence, let's take Mongo database and I'm using Docker container for that. So if you are checking our sources in the GitHub, then it's there. Then uh, there is a Docker Composer file and here we have uh, two services or two instances. This is the Mongo database itself uh, with the very basic uh, username and password and the database name as well. And we have a user interface. Uh, this is a web interface so we can actually check what's happening inside the Mongo when we when we went through the workflow a couple of times. But don't expect much because this is very purely technical stuff there, so it's not for human beings reading this through, right? But anyway, this is Docker Composer and uh, I'm running it, uh, so let me just start a session. And for those who are not aware, this is Docker Composer app you can use, so it's... Uh, it's Docker Compose, not Composer, my bad. And here we have Mongo, we also have this Mongo Express UI that is listening on 8081 port, we can check it as well. So let's do it. And here we have our database, we don't have uh, the database for us, for our chatbot, because it was a single call there, so this is the way how Mongo works, but it's there, we can check it later. And um, how we can uh, enable <coughs> external um, checkpoints, we are talking about checkpoints, right? And it's very simple and pretty simple with Mongo itself, so first uh, here we are defining our Mongo connection, it's this one. So we have a database and then we just have to define a checkpoint from Lang Graph, right? So it's a, it's a MongoDB saver and we are taking database from Mongo. It's, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, guys. So it's there and uh, then we do have the checkpoint uh, that's uh, supposed by Mongo and uh, the rest is the same. You just change your memory implementation with the Mongo memory and you have it. So we do have a chatbot graph definition, it's uh, exactly the same as from the previous session. And again, if this is the first video that you are watching our channel, please check the previous videos where we're going uh, step by step increasing the complexity and talking about different concepts. But anyway, this is a copy paste from the previous lesson and the only change here is this one. So uh, when I'm compiling my graph, I'm defining check pointer to Mongo in mem uh, Mongo database as a memory storage. And here we are, it's the same graph, nothing really new here, and let's try and uh, make a call there. So, again, uh, the same kind of dialogue I invented a couple of uh, videos back. So, hi, I'm working on a Python project and I'm stuck with handling API responses. And it was a call, we don't have summary yet, that's expected, it's the beginning of our conversation. But if we go here back to Mongo and refresh it, okay, we do have our chatbot database already. And there we have two collections. This is for checkpoint writes and checkpoints. And we can even go deeper and grab a section. So uh, you see it was only a single call of a chat uh, bot, right? And immediately we have multiple records here already. And this is how it looks like. Uh, so we do have a task ID, we have our thread ID here. And probably this is the way how uh, the data will be fetched later in the next session. Uh, we do have this channel and I think it looks like we have a chatbot as our graph and start as the starting point probably and uh, this kind of basic structure definition. And another table we have here, or collection I should say, because it's Mongo, it's not a Postgres, not this SQL database at all. 
uh, we have this uh, the second collection and we have three uh, records here or documents again uh, let's talk in mongoose terms and there take a look we have uh, maybe I should grab the latest one so here we have kind of the results the state that we have at the end probably because it's the latest one and here we have messages and you can't read it here because it's coded in a binary format uh, right but we have messages question answer and summary and yeah this is the way how it looks like in mongo and just continue our experimentation here if i ask for a second question and the user is working on python summary is here and again it was three documents retrieved and if i refresh it and go to checkpoint again immediately I have seven so the database has been updated all the time when we are operating with our graph Again, pretty straightforward. You just define a new implementation of your checkpointer. In this case, it's Mongo database. You can enable SQL database as well, and it's there. And the second thing I wanted to show you, uh, this is the way how you can represent your graph in a better way, where you can see some insights, like you don't have only the picture of the graph, and you can guess what's happening there, but you can see some details about that, about the flow, I mean. And uh, this is, uh, it's called Line Graph Studio. And for doing that, you have to define your uh, folder structure. So you define requirements, and uh, this, these are not all the requirements needed. I just copy pasted from the requirements. So these are from the whole of uh, our sessions across from one to seven. Uh, but anyway, I was just lazy. And then you have to define your chatbot um, definition. And you say, okay, you have a chatbot as a graph and uh, the Python version, the dependencies, you define where to find them, etc. And the environment variables were important because there you have to define your API keys, for example, for Open API. And chatbot in this case, it's not a Python notebook anymore. This is a regular Python script. And again, I copy pasted uh, the latest chatbot with summarization here. And if you go through, you can see that, uh, okay, we are still using GP uh, for all mini. We have the summary state, which contains all the question answer summary plus messages. We have some system messages here and chatbot not and summarize not like everything we discussed already in the previous video. And then having this uh, folder prepared with all the information, you can go to the uh, Land Graph Studio and just open the whole folder here. And I have it already like from a recent one. And if I do this, again, it takes some time because uh, it verifies that all the dependencies are there. It's uh, pulling some from, from Docker as well. So you have to wait for some time. And finally you have it. So this is our graph, uh, the way how it's represented in Studio. And here we have the chatbot. If I would define another AI agent here, it will appear in a list. And again, then we have threads here and this probably started to make sense for you, right? This thread ID we defined. So this is where our conversation with chatbot happens. And talking about our schema, we have messages as a list. Uh, we have question, answer, and summary. And let's try, okay, we are already in a new thread. So thread has been defined for us, but let's, uh, let's try and see how the dialogue from previous video works. I'm just going to copy paste it to save our time. So I'm going back, I'm open this uh, six, scrolling down. And just go and copy paste all these things and you'll see how it works. So I have a question. And here I'm typing something like, hi, I'm working on Python project and I'm submitting it. And see, we immediately see the flow, how it goes. It was from chatbot and to the end. And then we see some details. So this is the answer, this is the question, our list of messages and summary is empty. And uh, also, like summarize wasn't touched at all. And then I'm taking the next question from my dialog. And again, I have a question and okay, sorry, what was the previous question? And let's take a look. It goes to chatbot. See, it goes to summary this time and then we are finishing the flow. And uh, well, first you can check, look at uh, the states after each uh, node, like how the state looked like, for example, from chatbot and summary still null, but then we went to some not summarize information. And take a look at that. We get the summary. The user is working on a Python project and we have two messages deleted. It's also mentioned here. And uh, if you have any problems, like, well, this is in scope of one thread. If you want to start a new conversation, this is thread ID. You can start a new thread. 
And again, I'll type something here, like, uh, hi, how are you? I'm Gary. And we have a response and it says, hey, hello again, I'm here to help. How can I assist you today? And my next question maybe are, can you help me with Python? And this time summarization happens again and we are here. It says, of course, what specific Python topic, but our Evgeny invited conversation, greet and express a desire to assistance with Python. The AI responded positively and so on. And we have again two messages deleted. And if you have any troubles here and again back, I can switch to my previous thread, for example, and uh, continue the dialogue, or I can switch back again to the first one and continue here. So this is how it works, all these communications. And if you have any troubles, you can always go to logs and just check here what's happening and uh, the timing, if there are any issues, something is failing. So this is the way, uh, the place where you would take a look at that. All right, that was a very short session where we briefly touched the way how you can persist your data to the real storage, like Mongo database or SQL server. And also uh, I showed you the graphical tool for LangGraph where, where you can see the details of the flow in details and details in details here. But you can check what's happening there and in case of any problems or the, what the output was, why this happened, why the bot decided to go this or that way, you can check it uh, more thoroughly here. And in the next session, uh, we'll try to touch a bit different topic. And this is about uh, communicating with human, because so far what we were doing was only a direct flow from A to B from start to the end. And practically we we're hoping that our agent is capable of processing everything. In the next sessions, we will take a look at the human in the loop, it's called, and the way how human can uh, interact with the chatbot or agree on something. You, you saw this technique probably when you're working with AI agents, when agents ask you to, to accept specific action or to tell your opinion on something. So this is what we are going to touch in. And it was Evgeny, thanks a lot for being with me, for sticking till the end of this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.